Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can automate any light switch with Home Assistant. When building home automation systems, one of the challenges that we always face is how do we integrate automations into this type of switches that we already have probably in the wall. And they do not have any electronics part, but you could see that they just bridge two contacts inside mechanically. So we turn on and turn off the lights where they are installed. One of the easiest options is to go in and replace those with any smart switches that you can then connect with your home assistant or any smart home setup that you have. And that should work. But the problem with that is that it costs a lot of money to install and replace everything in the house. And in some instances that might not even be possible because you need to keep the original wiring or you want to make the place exactly the same as you found it, but you still want to have it automated while you use it. The solution that I came up with is a device that I like to call the button bot. The device consists of a node MCU running ESP home with a servo attached that I then glued to the side of the switch. This way I used double-sided tape on the switch so it's not really permanent and it can be easily removed if there is a need to. And also, uh, since the servo is mounted on the side, the switch is also operated manually. So and I have it here connected to a light bulb just for demonstration purposes. But we could also use automations and the Home Assistant app that we could switch on the light anytime that we want. In terms of wiring, the Node MC is currently running out of a power bank, actually a DIY power bank, and you can check the video how I built it over here. And the servo, I removed the connector. So I basically took out the pins from inside and then I connected power and ground to the V in and ground pins here on the left. Let me zoom in to show you. So the V in connects to the red wire of the servo and I added a bit of uh, heat shrink there to properly isolate it. The brown wire is connected to ground and I'm using pin D5 to connect to the orange wire, which is the signal on this servos that I'm using. And the switch is basically connected as you would normally have it in the house. So lives comes into there, it's being separated or switched through the switch and goes to the light bulb and then neutral is just connected directly with a quick clamp so when we press the switch the light turns on and we can then use the automation with the 9 gram servos to connect and actuate the switch the way that this works mechanically i have the servo mounted to the side of the switch using some double-sided tape and some wooden sticks to act as spacers so i can have this off the uh, switch so it can operate manually and if we want to automate we are using the double horn here so it can actuate on both sides and if i press uh, on the first button then it pushes the switch in one direction and if i press on the other one then it pushes it to the other side and basically that terminates the connection and you could manually trigger this to be on and then automatically using the app or some conditions you can make it to turn off based on that since this acts as a lever and uh, applies some force to how the whole thing operates i've also added some pieces of wood and a support because Otherwise, the server would just tip over. So this provides a secure connection. This is also secured with double-sided tape, so it can be easily removed if there is a need to. And uh, you can return basically everything back to original. And we could see the actuation here. So I'm going to turn on the server now, and I'm going to turn off. So you could see there is a bit of movement. Uh, because of the lever action, but that can all be adjusted in the code. Uh, so now let's jump to the computer so I can show you how the device is connected and how the code runs on that.
And here within Helm Assistant, this is the device. And these are the two buttons that we have. So we can trigger the server to turn on in one direction and turn on off in the other one. Uh, we have a manual control of the position of the server. So if we actuate that, then we can set any position that we want on the server. And that's just for debugging or trying something or whatever. Then we have two settings that we can use in relation with the button. And that is the press distance and the press duration. The press duration simply tells how long the server should be in the on position. And this is helpful if you want to automate things that are just push buttons. For example, if you want to mount this on a PC power button, and you want to have the option to cycle the power. If something goes wrong with the computer, you can just press and hold for five seconds and that would forcefully shut down the computer. That might be beneficial if you want to have it somewhere remotely and something bad happens and the regular access doesn't work. This one is in milliseconds, so you could specify it to be 1000 milliseconds. And now if we turn on, uh, we'll see that the servo stays longer. And if we specify this to, let's say 200, then it just quickly pushes and moves away uh, from the switch. And this is something that you would need to define on your own, depending on the current need. Again, depending on how you mount this on the switch and how you use it, you could also specify the distance that the arm travels. So basically, the arm can swivel 90 degrees in both directions. Currently, it's in the middle position and that's where it always returns. So you could still use the manual mode, but you could specify this and I would lower this one. Let's say I'll add 30 and if I now trigger it, we'll see that the arm just moves a little bit and it's not really enough to press the switch. But in some instance, you may want to do that. Uh, let's try 40. So it's going to go a bit further now. You could see that it just barely touches the switch when it comes here. In my case, the distance that I found works okay is 60. So I'm going to leave it on that. And you could see that the actuation now works flawlessly. And you could see how that position of the server is being updated with the code. And also inside the logbook, we have everything uh, that happened and what triggered it. Now, the code that runs everything on the Node MCU is created using the ESP Home platform. And you have plenty of videos on how you can integrate this into Home Assistant, as well as videos on Home Assistant on how you can set it up. So I won't go into details on that in this video, but I'll just focus on the device itself. The first thing that we have is output specified as an ESP8266 PWM signal. We have an ID for that and the pin that we output that signal is on pin D5 with a frequency of 50 Hertz. And this is the typical setup that these nine gram servos use and most of the servers actually use. We can define the duty cycle of that signal later on the count. Then we have the two buttons uh, one for turning on and uh, one for turning off. They are basically the same. We just have a bit of a different icon and a bit of a different sequence of event that happens when we press that button. For the turning on, we set the servo value. This is a number that we have later on here. We'll get there. So we set its value to whatever the press distance number is being set and then we wait for whatever the press duration state is currently on. So for example, in our case, actually in my case, the press distance is 60. So a bit more than halfway of the travel and the press duration currently is set to 200 milliseconds. So the value will be set. There will be a 200 milliseconds delay and then we return that value to zero. So we have the servo always in the neutral position. And the opposite happens for the turning off. 
where now instead of setting the press distance, we multiply that with minus one. So we turn the servo in the other direction, wait for the specified duration and also return it back to zero once we are done. The servo is defined with the PWM output that we have up there and there is no direct uh, control of it in any way. That's why we need this number. And this is the slider that we have here where we can manually control the position and we have its minimum and a maximum set to minus 100 and 100 and the initial and the middle value is always zero. We have a little action set on that. So whenever this value changes, then we just relay that um, information as a position within the servo as a percentage of a duty cycle that we want to uh, be on. So ranges from minus 100 to 100% or from minus one to one, that would basically set the position of the servo. And then we, at the bottom, we have the two other number fields. Uh, those are the press distance and the press duration. For the press duration, we have a minimum of 200 milliseconds uh, with initial of 500 and a maximum of five seconds. So we don't want this to be stuck in pushing the button all the time. This again, depends on your use case. So feel free to edit this. And the last thing is the distance where I'm setting from zero to a hundred. And that would limit that we don't have any position outside of the required distance of the servo. So we'll limit that. Both of these are set to be shown as boxes so we can manually edit the numbers. And I didn't set that on the position so I can have the slider and manually trigger the position and the distance of the server. Now, I know that looking at the setup like this, this whole thing might look a bit uh, bulky and messy, but this is just for demonstration purposes. All of this can be tidied up a lot more and can be placed in an electrical box next to the switch or somewhere away of the switch. So. You could have like uh, 18650 with a charger board that you can charge this device, or you could have it powered with a mobile phone charger to have it constantly on because you're gonna have power somewhere close to the switch probably. What I really like about the setup is that it's completely re reversible. So you are not making any changes to the existing circuit other than sticking the server with a double-sided tape and that can be easily removed if there is a need to do that. And also for people that are not comfortable wiring uh, main switches, this does not connect to that main uh, power in any way. So it's really just a way where you can add to your existing setup and have it switched using your smart home system that is completely reversible. And that's not something that is easily achievable otherwise, because if you add a device that sits in between the switch and the wiring, if you ever want to remove that, then you'll need to undo all the wiring and return back everything as it was before. And that might be a tricky thing to do if for someone that is not really comfortable working with main power. The device can be easily mounted onto you any switch, so, I here have it on this other one, which I don't really have plugged in currently, but you would still see that it properly actuates and we can turn on and off the switch. And here is also mounted to this very old style of switches where we could still actuate and use the servo to turn on and off the light or whatever is attached to this one. So it doesn't need to be limited to just light, but anything that can be operated with a switch. Uh, in this case, because the servo is mounted through its whole width here, uh, that reduces the lever action. So we don't even need the support on the side and the whole thing can operate just being glued to the side of the switch. So if 
this device is something that triggered your attention and if you think that you like this one make sure to subscribe i'm gonna have many more coming in that will be strictly an integration into home assistant and how you can tap into current setups and how you can make your own devices so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that if you have any questions leave a comment down below in the video i'll have the links to the code on my website article and you'll find the link down in the video description and i will see you all in the next one cheers